Now I select the tone just, tonal adjustment tool. So I click on it and it moves around. So the values for each of these squares is, um, has uh, red, green, and blue values. This one at 63. So I move the tonal tool over the square, click, drag, pull back until I see that the number over here on the right is 63. So there it is, 63. This one I know is supposed to be 48. Bring it down a little bit. And this one is supposed to be 20. Bring it down a little bit. You see the histogram change as I make that adjustment. Once I'm happy with that, I need to make sure this is 63, 48. You have to tweak it a little bit. 20. Finished. Scroll down here. Medium contrast. Next, detail, 55 or 50, 1, 33, oops, 33. I'll do that for all my images. I scroll down. This is going to be a little bit different in your version. This will be a checkbox yes or no to remove chromatic aberration. I have an older version here, but it's more or less the same. So increase your magnification the other way. Look at an area of high contrast. Once you check the box yes or no, actually, I want to go back, undo. So I just move vignette amount instead of chromatic aberration. If you do something that you want to take back or undo in your history panel here, just go back. So unback, or do undo. Go up here. You can see this change. So I want to try and get rid of the color fringing. There, good enough. All right. So we've adjusted the white balance. We've adjusted the exposure. This included the color balance. You can see the measure and uh, the measure of the color temperature here. We've checked that it's in focus. Remove chromatic aberration. And that's it. If any of these uh, changes, these developed changes I've made, I want to save as a preset because I know I'm going to apply these same changes to all the other specimens I, I manage, then I'll create a preset. So I'm going to name this um, Alex Herbarium Specimens. You could name it All Herbarium Specimens because All Herbarium Specimens are processed like this. And it would include the things we want to include in that preset are sharpening. That's always going to be the same. Chromatic aberration can vary from image to image, but in your case, it'll be a check box on or off, and you always want it to be on to remove chromatic aberration. So there it is. And you can update it too. If you find you've improved your develop settings and you want to update this preset, have it stay the same name, you can update it based on the, the changes you've made to the image. So once you're happy with that, you go back to the library. Go back to grid view. Select all the images in that batch. And synchronize settings. So I want to synchronize the white balance, the tone, tone curve, everything I changed. I didn't crop. Synchronize. And as you can see, now all of them have this little symbol down in the right hand corner, which means that some develop adjustments have been made. If you find you want to do something like crop, Here you see a symbol that says this image has been cropped. If I want to undo that, I just go back and undo. I can undo it here or I can undo it here. Remember, all of these things that we do are only instructions that we're asking Lightroom to perform. It's not really performing them on the images. It's not changing the image in any way. But when we export the image, Lightroom will perform those changes on the new images that are made. 
but still the original raw file will be saved within the DNG that we export. <coughs> okay, so for this batch from October, Monday 28th, we have six images. I want to export them. So it tells me I have six selected, export. Where will I export them? Specific folder on my desktop. You want to save your images always to the same place. Don't move them around. You want the process and to be as efficient as possible. They go to my DNGs. I'll make DNGs for archive first. Format DNG. You'll have camera raw probably seven point something, so select that. And that's it. It's going to name them as the image file name, which is exactly what I want. Here, actually I'm seeing here an example of what the image file name will look like, and evidently the last time I used this, I named it something else. So you have to make sure that file name only is selected. There, that's what the image name will look like. Now that I'm satisfied, other, other items you could do upon uh, export, you can sharpen, you can tell, uh, tell it to include different types, of, different types of information. So it's exporting. status bar, if I minimize that, and I go over here, and I look in the folder for DNGs, I see them being made. And you can see here, the size is pretty big. Doesn't take long for DNGs to fill up a drive. Once I've exported DNGs, I want to export the images again, but this time as JPEGs. Those are to go on the web or into my database. So with the images still selected, I export again. I choose a different folder. This time I want them to go to the JPEGs folder for access. I still want the file name to be the barcode number. I want the format to be JPEG. You can see here we could export as TIFF too. sRGB, quality 100. If you decided you wanted to make a smaller image than the one that will be made, you can tell it to resize based on the long edge, based, based on specific dimensions. So if you need a, very, a much smaller image than the one you'll generate, uh, you can adjust for that. So, but in this case, I don't want to resize. Export. And these should be going in here. So you'll notice when I try to look at my DNGs, Windows tells me it can't open it. So only Photoshop, Lightroom, the, the larger image processing uh, software can open them. But that's not the case for the JPEGs. I can see them without any trouble. And I can also see the metadata that's embedded in them now. So if I right click on any one of these column names and select, select the information that I know I populated, for example, creator, copyright, I can see here now New York Botanical Garden and Alex. And wherever that image goes, until someone removes it, it will be in there. So if I right click and look on the properties, and I look under details, there's all the information. So when this image goes online, and someone looks at it online and they right click on it, they'll see this too. And certain image software can, can see it as well. So that's it. 
So then you go back to Lightroom and you work on the next date. One thing I find really helpful when you start to juggle hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images from five to ten different digitizers, I like to make myself a checklist so that I know that those images have been processed from the computer all the way to the archive because I don't want to lose anything. If I lose it, I'll never know that I lost it until who knows how far down the line. So it's better to just foolproof it and make myself a checklist. some reason it says we go I have to be patient with my computer <laughs> mm. now Lightroom uh, occupies a lot of processor speed so you have to be careful it might slow down your computer a lot so it can it can run some other programs at the same time depending on your processor speed and your memory, your number of gigs of RAM. Um, come on. There we go. So I made this template spreadsheet to help you. You can take it or leave it. So the things I like to capture, the date. So this is the date I backed it up, which I know to be, where are you hiding? Uh, I know the date was Wednesday, October 30th, 2013. No, that's wrong. The date is actually this one. So I go to my spreadsheet, put in the date. Who was the creator? Alex. Number of images. Um... Alex actually did a total of 20. Did I input metadata? Yes. Did I process them? Yes. Did I save the DNG? Yes. Did I save the JPEG? Yes. Did I archive them? No. Not yet. Have they been uploaded to the database? No. Not yet. So this helps you to know where the images are in a stage because you can have different batches of images at different stages of the process. You can have this running while you're doing this, while you're doing this because as we see the greater the number of images the longer it takes to process something. So you want to be able to juggle a couple of things at once. So this helps you keep track of that. So you guys ready to try? <laughs> <laughs>